Good evening everyone, welcome back to my channel, True Crime with Jess Rose. Thank you for joining me. So we're in our sixth week of isolation. Um, feel like I'm slowly going mad, but we're all safe. Um, still, I hope you are all too and staying safe. And um, yeah, uh, thank you for joining me again. Now this story, I have, I had been told about it, but I hadn't looked into it. So it took a couple of days looking into it and oh god it's just awful it, it genuinely is now i've got to warn you um a couple of the names i am going to struggle with so please bear with me um but this is a story about a woman named christine shura shura i think that's how i pronounce it and um, Christine was actually born on the 30th of June 1976 in Hanover, Germany. And a lot of the stories I do, um, when I first mention, you know, names, it's usually the victim. Um, but in this case, it's not. Christine's actually the perpetrator in this case. Um, now, Christine was, she was a normal child. Uh, she was brought up in Germany, um, but she did uh, do a, um, ex as an exchange student to America and lived in Manhattan for a little while. She lived in Oklahoma. She was very well travelled. Um, and just a normal girl, looks quite normal. But not a lot on her, to be honest. Uh, and I have looked, but... <sighs> There's not a lot to be found about her. She just seems like a normal girl. I'm ever so sorry. I've got an absolute thumper of a headache. So I thought maybe if I loosen my hair. Sorry about that. Right, okay. So, like I said, quite a normal girl. Um, nothing really stands out on things that I've found. So, we come to 2006... Um, which would make um, Christine 30 and she goes on holiday to Crete in Greece um, I don't know, it doesn't say if it was a girl's holiday I assume it was it doesn't say she she went on her own but while she was there she met, met a lad called this is what I'm on about with the pronunciation Torgny Torgny Halgren Torgny Halgren it's a talk now. Um, he's Swedish. And they meet on holiday. And I thought it was like a couple of week fling. Like a couple of weeks worth of a fling. But it wasn't. Apparently it was just a few days. Um, four or five days. And they had this brief fling, like I say. And both went back home. He went back to Sweden. She went back to Germany. Um... But Christine was devastated. Christine, in this very short amount of time, had fell for Torgny. Torgny. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, but yeah, she'd fell for him, hook, line and sinker. This wasn't just a, a holiday fling. It, you know, she, she, there was real feelings there. And to the point where when he got home, she was just texting him constantly, calling him. She actually went to Sweden for a bit. She, it's it's a little bit different than if you met someone in your own town on a night out and then you'd go on to maybe to the same place on a night out to maybe see them again this is a different country she, and she travels from Germany to Sweden to see this guy and he does say you know he, he tries he, you know he did like her and he tries to give it a go while she's there, but it just doesn't work. Which is usually the way with holiday flings. I know some people have met somebody on holiday and gone on to marry them and it's been amazing. But nine times out of ten, it's exactly what it says. It's a holiday fling. And you go home, back to reality, and it's over. Christine wasn't happy about that. She didn't want it to be over. So like I say, she's... Would you, I suppose you'd say, starting to stalk this guy now. Um, now, I'm just leaving that bit for a second. It will make sense to you in a minute. 
but in Sweden, like completely different family, completely different circumstance. There's a couple called Nicholas and Emma Jang Jangistig. Oh, I really hope I'm pronouncing this right. And Nicholas and Emma met, fell in love, and got married. Um, you know, and went on to have two beautiful children. And there are photos of them, and their names are Max and Saga. And Max is three at this time, and Saga's one. And they're just beautiful children. They really are so cute. And what you notice in the photos, Max has always got his arm around his little sister. Very, very cute family. Um, but Nicholas and Emma, they started falling out. You know, it happens. It, they just didn't, they stopped getting on. And Nicholas leaves. Um, so I've read, obviously Emma's got the two kids. He sees the two kids. I think it was said that it was a little bit um, tetchy, let's say, to begin with when they first broke up. But it started to become amicable. He was seeing his two children. And it was working, it was okay. Um, well, obviously Emma's now single and she meets Torgny. Torgny, who had the fling with Christine in Crete. Now, obviously, he's single. He meets Emma. Falls in love with her. And, you know, he wants to be with her. But on the site, he's still Christine. This is now 2008, sorry, so from the holiday in Crete in 2006, she's been pursuing this for almost two years. This is what I'm saying, she was crazy. Um, you know, I'd, I'd already told you she followed him back to his country. Um, by this point, she was making up pregnancies that didn't exist. She was threatening suicide two, three times. You know, she just was not taking no for an answer. And because Torgny now had met Emma and was in a, you know, he really liked this girl. Um, he loved her two children. And he just says, it's time for you to move on to Christine, which was it was a red rag to a ball, whatever cliche wants to be thrown at it. But it, it, it was just... It wasn't the wrong thing to say to her, but possibly the wrong thing to say to someone like Christine, because she didn't take it well at all. Now, Christine, on March the 17th, 2008, she travels to Arboga, which is in Sweden, from Germany, obviously. It's not round the corner gone to another country um but this time she's not looking for talk now she's looking for emma because talking had to be quite brutal with her and say i'm in a new relationship we're very happy you know i think by this point he'd moved in with emma and the kids um and that's it you've got to move on and like i say christine she just she she couldn't get her head round how he could be in another relationship. He, she didn't get it. After two years, really, you still don't get it. So, somehow, it's very sketchy on how she found out Emma's address, whether Torgny gave it to her innocently. I don't... It, whether she was following them, I don't know. I don't know. That's very sketchy when I've looked online and tried to look at different forums, it doesn't actually say how she got Emma's address and the kids' address. But on the 17th of March, 2008, Christine turns up at Emma's house in Arboga in Sweden. Um, and all she had in her hand was a hammer when she turns up at the door. Now, Emma, as I've seen the house, lovely house, it looks lovely where they lived. Um, and Emma opens the door and, you know, you know what kids are like when the door goes, they, they run too. And 
when Emma opened the door, Christine was stood there. Um, and Christine proceeded to lay in to Emma with the hammer and he said 15 times on her, on her skull. Um, now little Max, like I say, who was three, you see in the photos, he's, he's, he seems like a really protective little boy and he tries to protect his mum from this woman who's coming and he's, he's, he's trying to kill her. And she turns the hammer on Max um, and she hits Max 25 times with a hammer. He's three. Um, and then little Saga, it just gets worse. Little Saga, um, again, very cute, only one, very cute little girl. Not far from a second birthday. Um, she'd run, she, she'd run and he's, and I just thought, what, what a clever little girl. But, um, Christine found her and it was said that most of her fury, for some reason, where the saga looked like Emma, I don't, I don't know, there's no explanation, but her anger and fury was mostly taken out on Little Saga. Um, and the word used was her school was obliterated. Oh, it's just so hard to say. Because I'm saying, because I want to tell you the information, but I'm trying to not take in what I'm saying to you. Because it's just when you think about how, what must be going on in your head to do that to a little boy and girl, let alone their mum. You know, you hear all the times of scorned women and, you know, stalking and she doesn't get over things. and But the, the kids, they were three and my, like, why? What, what, what was going on in your head? But I suppose for a girl to go to another country, again, not for the first time, it was actually said that she was seen. Now, this happened on March the 17th. It was said she was actually seen on camera on the 14th and the 16th. So it was possible she was trying to find where they lived for a few days before she actually found Emma's house. Um, you know, so she's actually, she's stalked to completely annihilate a whole family to have this man who doesn't want her he, he, he'd he been single all that time before he met her man. he didn't want her he even gave it a go I mean when she turns up in Sweden after a flinging Greece it'd be like Ooh, you know there'd be warnings there red flags but he still he, he tried to give it a chance then and he didn't work it, it didn't work she should have just gone home and he kept saying to her you've got to move on and i'll say these fake pregnancies and i'm gonna kill myself and it's like originally when i heard of it i thought my god after two weeks but it wasn't even two weeks it was four or five days so so it said oh yay both children died at the scene um, like I said, Saga didn't stand a chance, and neither did Max. It was a hammer, for goodness sake. Um, but Emma, their mum, survived. She did survive, um, and was able to, you know, testify to who had done it. But because Emma, at the time when they were found, was, um, you know, she was in a coma, she wasn't with it. At first, they actually, uh, the police actually arrested Nicholas, the kid's dad. Um, you know, because it's, some. It, sometimes that's who it is, isn't it? It's the, the, the partner. And he was very quickly eliminated from, you know, all, all suspicion. Same with Tor Torgny, you know. And then, when um, Emma came round. I don't know if she'd seen Christine before, or if Torgny had warned her about it, but she knew it was her, and she named her, and obviously when she come round, 
by that point, Christine had buggered off back to Germany. Absolute coward of a woman. You know, she comes a completely annihilates an entire family and then trip, drops on back. Well, obviously the Swedish government, because this was, from what I've heard, there was absolute uproar across the Swed you know, the Swedish media. They, they needed to find this person, obviously a very dangerous person. Um, now, upon now, the, Christine being named, sorry, it's, it's spluttering there. Um, upon Christine being named, Sweden, the Swedish uh, police, I suppose, government, got involved and in touch with the German police department. I, I'm not sure how it works there, but they got in touch anyway. Um, and they brought in Christine for DNA, for a DNA test. Had to send the results over to Sweden and wait for them to come back. So originally she had been pulled in. Um, I think it was on the 23rd. So this happened on the 17th of March. By the 23rd, she was already getting pulled in in Germany. Very quickly solved this one. Um, they let her go, waiting for the DNA results. And when they come back, of course, they were a match. So not only the DNA, plus Emma testifying that it's her, um, and also, there was CCTV footage of Christine at Arboga train station on the 17th of March. And other footage of her around that time. So, you know, she was there. It was like, it was her. She was banged to roll. It's, that was it. Um, so, Christine was arrested by the German police on the 30th of March, 2008. So, 13 days. I, I mean, it was all done very very quickly considering she was in a different country um and then she was transferred to sweden for the trial because obviously she committed the crime there against a, a swedish national um so on the 26th of august 2008 christine was found guilty of the two murders of oh, the two little kids and the attempted murder of emma um she was sentenced to life imprisonment in Sweden, but she was actually transferred back to Germany five years later in 2012. Um, sorry, four years later, sorry, uh, for the remainder of her sentence. So she'll she'll finish out her sentence in Germany. Um, now, obviously, different countries have um, different rules on what life imprisonment actually is like in Britain. It's... 15 years um you know in america when you hear them say life that's it you're done life you're not getting out again you know it, it, it really does vary now i've heard today that in sweden life equals 12 years and i was just mortified i was like 12 years really which would mean she would be getting out this year but then looked more into it and no that's not true at all um Within Sweden, their life um, sentence is usually around the 21 years, it said. Um, but she's in Germany to, fill, to, to finish that sentence. So I, it says life. She never should get out again. You know, I will keep an eye on it. Um, but I'm just hoping no, no time soon because I looked at the videos of these two little children and just so cute and he constantly had his arm around her uh, around his little sister max did around saga constantly they just looked such cute children and then when you know what happened to them you're like oh and the poor mom you see photos of the mom in hospital now what i will warn you um there are autopsy photos on online um and they're quite shocking. I don't know how or why they're on there. I didn't even know that was something that you could kind of view as easy as I could. But like I say, there are. And you see the injuries that she did to Max. I don't think Sargas is on there, which, thank goodness. Because um, if you remember what I said, obliterated was a word used. Um, but... I think it's Maxie's autopsy photos and they're just 
devastating. I actually seen the photos before I seen them alive, you know, in, in, in other things I watched. So I'd already seen those. But then when you see them alive and the, the pictures and, and then to see that, it just breaks your heart. Absolutely breaks your heart. So I will, again, warning you, you know, if you want to look, they're right there. But they're really not for everybody because they, they, they are quite heartbreaking to look at. They're, they're some of the, the harder ones that I've seen because they're children. You know, they'd be hard if it was an adult, but because they're children, it's just it's very upsetting. Um, and, yeah, I just... I don't know what to make of this story at all. It's just so hard to how it how it connected. You've got these two very different lives going on, and purely through Emma, unfortunately meeting Torgny, and I've got to say unfortunate, and she's got to think that too, and so is he, because of what happened. You know, it doesn't say they remain together or anything else. It, it doesn't say that, but I couldn't imagine she'd stay with him after that. You know, I'm not. It wasn't his fault. Absolutely not. But you couldn't stay with someone after that. After someone they'd had a fling with was capable of doing that. It, I don't know. I'd question everything. Um, and yeah, it's just so hard. And like I say, when I first heard the story, I thought two weeks at least and it's still complete over but I thought a two week thing and it's four or five days and for two years she couldn't let it go I mean it didn't say she was a loner or you know there was anything mentally wrong with her they did do um a psychiatric evaluation before she stood trial she was fine perfectly normal nothing wrong with this woman you know, there's no feeble excuses that can be thrown out there in her defence. There are none. They actually tried to appeal it. I read straight after they tried to appeal it, saying that Emma, because she gave her testimony, I think she gave it from her hospital bed, um, said she might not be of sound mind and she might not re be remembering properly. What an insult. You wouldn't remember. You You wouldn't remember and it was said that the minute she's seen a picture of christine she was like that's her of course she would know who it was 100 percent. and to be questioned on that i'd have been fuming um but like i said the appeal was you know turned out it was thrown out she will do her life and i'm just hoping it is life for this one because she can't be out on the streets she genuinely can't. She can't. She can't be free to walk the streets because she's not there. Um, so yeah, I I just wanted to do that one because I'd never heard of it. Like I say, it was um, it was actually a friend of mine that mentioned it to me. Um, I wasn't aware of this story at all, and it's just I don't know whether it is because obviously it being Sweden and Germany it wasn't hot as highlighted, or maybe I just didn't hear about it at the time. But I just wanted to share it with you because. Be careful when you go on holiday, maybe. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I can say about this. Because no no one in their right mind would behave like that. And yet, apparently, she was in her right mind. I don't know. I don't know. But thank you again for joining me. Um, just keep safe. Um, keep looking after each other. Hopefully, this will all be over soon. Um, shout out to all my family. Thank you. And, um, yeah, I will see you soon. Thank you again. Um, if you'd like to comment, I appreciate that. Or like, if you really want to subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Thank you for my new subscribers this week. And, yeah, I will see you soon. Thank you so much. Thank you.